Hey everyone, welcome to tutorial number three. In the previous video, we started making sound by creating a ugen function and sending it the play message. This process creates a synth, which represents a single sound producing unit on the audio server. However, the primary and more flexible procedure for creating sound is to first create a synth def and then execute the synth def by calling a synth explicitly. A synth def is essentially a recipe for a particular sound, and a synth is the execution of that recipe. As we can see in the help file for function, function.play is often more convenient than synthdef.play, particularly for short examples and quick testing. But where reuse and maximum flexibility are of greater importance, synthdef and its various methods are usually the better choice. Likewise, in the help file for synthdef, we see that methods such as function play, etc., are simply conveniences which automatically create a synth def. To demonstrate, I'll take our ugen function from the previous tutorial and convert it to a synth def. As is the case with many objects in SuperCollider, we create a new instance using the new message. New, in this case, takes six arguments, but generally you'll only specify values for the first two arguments, name and ugen graph function. The first argument is the name you want to give to your synth diff, which can be specified as either a string or a symbol. I prefer the symbol because it's one less character I have to type. The second argument is a ugen function, which is nearly identical to our function from above, so we can pretty much copy and paste. However, there's one additional thing to consider when building a synthdef. If you want the synthdef to output a signal, you must include an output ugen. The most basic of these ugens is simply called out, which can run at the audio rate or the control rate depending on what kind of signal you want to output. Out needs an output bus index and the signal to write to that bus. I'll deal with inputs, outputs, and buses in a future tutorial since there's a lot of information to cover, so for now I'll just say that the audio bus with index 0 corresponds to your lowest numbered hardware audio output. Audio bus 1 corresponds to the next highest hardware output, and so on until you run out of hardware outputs. So in the case of most laptop sound cards, this means audio bus 0 corresponds to your left speaker, and audio bus 1 corresponds to your right speaker. We'll close out the synthdef, and the last thing we need to do is add the new synthdef, which sends it to the audio server so that it can be used. There are other methods to make a synthdef usable, such as load, send, and store, but add is probably the most flexible. To execute the synthdef, we create a new synth and provide it with the name of a synthdef. We terminate the synth using the free method, just like we've done in the previous tutorial. The synthdef above has one argument, called noisehertz, whose default value is 8. If I wanted to create a synth that starts with a different value for noisehertz, I can add a second argument to synth.new. This is an array that contains the symbolic name of the argument, followed by a comma, and the value. As we saw in the previous tutorial, the set message can be used to update control arguments while the synth is active. In the synth help file, notice that the new method actually takes four arguments. In addition to the synthdef name and argument array, there's also target and add action. These are useful, but not relevant right now, so I'll deal with them in a tutorial down the road. For now, it's fine to use the default values for target and add action. Before I close out this video, I'll code another synthdef from scratch to reinforce concepts. I'll call this one pulse test. I'll send one signal to the left speaker and another to the right speaker. I'll use pulse waves for both audio signals. I'll control the frequency of these pulse waves with non-interpolated noise with a new value chosen four times per second. 
LFNoise0 is a random value generator, so even though I'm using the same uGen twice, they will both generate a unique stream of values. I want to be able to change the frequency as the synth is playing, so I'll create some arguments. I'll define a fundamental frequency and a maximum partial number, and have LFNoise0 range between them. And I'll introduce a message we haven't seen yet called round, which simply rounds the output to the nearest multiple of a number. So now in this case, LF noise 0 will output random overtones of a given fundamental. Just for a little extra subtlety, I'll use LF pulse to add some octave jumps. LF pulse normally ranges from 0 to 1, so I'll add 1 in order to have it range from 1 to 2. And I'm just using different frequency values here for the sake of variety. I'll use LF pulse again to control the amplitude and transform what would otherwise be a steady tone into regular pulses of sound. I'll specify a duty cycle that's close to zero so that the pulses are fairly short. I'll set the phase of the second amplitude control to 0.5 so that the two pulse waves are out of phase with one another. This way, the sound will alternate between the left and right speakers. And I'll also multiply by 0.75 just to take down the volume a bit. In fact, let's use another argument for the frequency of the amplitude pulsing. I'll add one last argument for the width of the pulse wave output, and I'll fill in the parentheses at the bottom. And last, I'll use free verb to add some reverb, just to make it sound a little nice. Let's try it out. We can change the width. The fundamental frequency. maximum partial number and last we can change the rate of amplitude pulse If I want to initialize this synth with arguments that are different from the default values, I can do so by providing an array of symbol value pairs as the second argument to synth, like this. That's it for tutorial number three. From this point on, I'll use function.play for short, simple examples, and I'll use synthdef for more complicated examples. Stay tuned for number four, where I'll talk about envelopes and done actions. Thanks for watching.